In this tutorial, we'll be going over PicoLabs. And what PicoLabs is, is an AI text to video generator. Now we've had AI text to video generators before, but they're not quite as good or coherent as what PicoLabs is able to achieve. Now to access PicoLabs, all you need to go do is access the URL pico.art. And over here, you'll get a button to say join beta. So once you click on it, it'll launch and open up our Discord server. So you will need to use Discord for this. There's no web UI that you can use. Once you're in the server, all you need to do is scroll down to the generate section. And so if you click on any one of these, so generate one, this will be where you generate all your images. Alternatively, if you don't want all your generations to be public, you can, if you go to the right side of the bar, you should be able to see a thing called Pico bot. If you right click that and then press message, you'll open up a direct message with the bot. So your generations won't be made public. So whether you're in the generate server or you're directly messaging the Pico bot, all you need to do is do forward slash and then type in the word create and then put in the prompt that you're going to use. So for this example, I'm going to be using a boat in the river in the style of a watercolor painting and then press enter. And now the bot will actually start generating your video. It doesn't take quite as long as other AI text or video generators. When I think back to Modelscape, I knew it took quite a while. This one takes around about 20, 30 seconds as it's using external processing. Now, once it's generated, all you need to do is press the play button and straight away, you'll be able to tell a couple of things. First of all, there's not a lot of motion in the picture. That's okay. We can change some settings to make sure there's more motion. Another thing is that it, the video is only three seconds long. Pika Labs can only generate three second videos. All the parameter tricks I'm going to show you today won't be able to change the actual length of your video. There is slight workarounds, but they require a probably additional videos. Another thing you'll notice is that it has the Pika Labs watermark on the side over here. Now that is going to be there regardless of whatever video you generate. And to remove that is quite easy. If you Google watermark removal tool, you'll easily be able to find something to help you remove that watermark if need be. Now this time I'm going to generate the video again, but this time I'm going to show you how parameters work. So to use parameters, do the same thing that you did last time. So forward slash create, put in your prompt. And now this time for parameters that we have, we have a couple of options. So let's say if I want to change the FPS, so standard, I believe is 24. But if you want, you can change it to a range between 8 to 24. So if you type in FPS and then type in 16, your video will now be 16 frames per second. Now, if I go generate that, you should be able to see the difference. Now that the video is generated, it wasn't quite as good as the last one, but as you can see, the video, if you look closely enough, is slowed down to 16 frames per second. The next parameter I'm going to show you is motion. So if you do force out create, put in your prompt, and then this time, Tap in the word motion and with motion, you get an option between zero to four. So zero being the least motion and four being highest motion. So if you put in a number there and then generate your video, the higher motion you have, the more motion will be in your actual video. You should be able to see the difference between using higher motions, but I found that sometimes it can be quite hit and miss in getting it to do exactly what you want. So for example, when I did boat in the river, and I put you to a high motion, sometimes it wouldn't actually move the boat. You would just move the surrounding objects. So the actual river itself, but the boat would be stationary. And sometimes it would actually move the boat as well. So you may have to regenerate the image a couple of times before you get exactly what you want. Now we have another parameter that you should know, and that's called guidance scale. And what guidance scale is, is very similar to how CFG works in stable diffusion. And what I mean by this is if you type in dash GS, then type a number between eight to 24, the lower the number, the more you're giving the control to the AI to do what it wants. However, the higher you go, so the more to 24 you go, the more it's going to closely follow your prompt. So now this could be useful if you essentially want more direct input over what it's been created. But on the other hand, if you want the AI to be more creative, you'd use a lower GS number. So if I now click generate. Now, another thing I'm going to show you is the camera option. So now if I type in the dash camera, now I have a few options so that I can move the camera within the video to achieve a more cinematic effect. So for example, if I wanted to, I could make the camera zoom in by using the zooming command. 
or I could make it move to the right using pan right. Or if I really wanted, I could make it rotate clockwise. Like all parameters, the camera one will also take a lot of experimentation to get used to, but you will have achieved much more cinematic looking videos. Now Pika Labs is a good text to video generator, but what takes it from good to great is its ability to use an image as a starting point to help generate the videos. Now, when you do this, the actual video quality is so much more better. That I highly recommend this. So to do this, what you want to do is do the same thing that you've been doing up to now, forward slash create, put in your prompt. Now this time, go out of the prompt box and then use the word image. And then it'll ask you to drag or drop your image file. So here is an image I made in Stable Diffusion and it's a boat in a river. And now if I go and click generate now, now that's generated, if I go click play, I can now see that it's animated my Stable Diffusion image. And what I find impressive about this is that even though there's not a lot of motion going on, and this can be easily fixed by using the additional prompts, I think we're compared to where we were a couple of months ago, the animation quality has greatly increased. And if I showed this video to someone who perhaps does not know much about AI, I could easily see them getting mistaken and thinking that this was made by a real human. And so this is quite impressive considering only a few months ago, the actual video quality wasn't that great from AI text to video generator tools. Now, the final thing I want to show you today is perhaps a really cool feature of Pika Labs, and it's called the encrypt text hub. So if you go and type in encrypt text, and now if I put in a message, so for example, good morning, and now if I put in my prompt, and now what you should be able to see is that if you look very closely, you should be able to see the text good morning within the actual video itself. And now I must admit, probably the prompt I used wasn't the best. So I probably used something like a mountain landscape or city landscape. And if you do that, you can get perhaps a very nice looking video with the text still being visible. So I think this is just a really cool feature of Pika Labs. And overall, I just think this is a great tool considering that it's also free. Now, if you do get stuck and you want to know more about the parameters that we use today or any other parameters, Pika Labs does have a nice little documentation page that where you can scroll down and find all the parameters that you can use. So I'll put this link in the video description and that's all from me and I'll see you next time.